Pontinho Vermelho lá. So everybody, um, welcome to our final installment of the Brazilian algebraic geometry seminar today. Um, so we are very happy to have Carolina Araújo from, from Impa, who will speak to us about birational geometry of labial pairs and three-dimensional Cremona transformations. So just one, just maybe one small announcement before Carolina begins. There also will be a, um, a virtual happy hour slash coffee break at the end of the talk. So for whomever is interested, please, please remain afterwards. So Carolina, please. Thank you, Ethan. It's uh, it's really a great pleasure to give this talk here at the, at the Brazilian Algebraic Seminar. And today I will talk about the birational geometry of Calabial pairs and applications to, to constructing interesting three-dimensional Cremona transformation. So let me start uh, by saying that this is a joint work with Alessio Corti and Alex Massarenti. And as a disclaimer, we will always be working over the complex numbers. So the, the topic of this talk may be a bit technical. Um, so let me start, before I, I discuss birational geometry of Calabial pairs, let me start with a very concrete motivation, which, is, which comes from understanding the automorphism group of K3 surfaces. So we fix D, a smooth quartic surface in P3. And so this is an example of a, a, a K3 surface. So it is uh, simply connected and, uh, and has a non, uh, non-vanishing uh, true form. So in other words, the, the canonical class is, uh, is trivial. And we are interested in, the, in understanding the, the group of automorphisms of D. So this, is, uh, this, is, uh, this object is very much studied, so we will discuss it more about it later, later on, but uh, let me just say that this is a very active uh, area of research, which I'm, I don't know uh, so much about, uh, but I am interested in the following question that is attributed to Giza tooling. So we learn from it, uh, we learn about it from a paper of Ogizo, and the question is, is every automorphism of, a, or of such K3 surface induced by a birational self-map of the ambient space? Um, again, later on, I hope to motivate why, uh, why one would ask such a question. Uh, so Ogizo addressed this question, and he answered it uh, negatively. So he produced some interesting examples of K3 surfaces and automorphism groups uh, that were not induced by a Cremona transformation of the ambient space. And then he could, after answering, answering it negati negatively, he started to consider more uh, refined versions of this, um, of this question. So maybe let me just state this open-ended uh, question. So which, so if not all, which automorphisms of, uh, of of a K3, a quarty K3 surface, uh, are induced by birational self maps of the ambient space. So here uh, we will we will come back uh, to this question later. But here I just want to say that um, the pair consisting of the projective space P3 and the smooth quartic hypersurface D is an example of a Calabial pair. So this is a a projective variety together with a divisor or, or a hypersurface uh, that is uh, anti-canonical, so linearly equivalent to, uh, to the anti-canonical class. Okay, so uh, it, in order to address these questions, let I will start by uh, discussing some general uh, facts and results about automorphism groups in, in general. So let's consider uh, X a complex projective variety. So we start with this variety and we are interested in studying its uh, automorphism group. Um, so the simplest example is the case of PN. So in this case, all the automorphisms of PN are linear. So these, they, they can be represented by an invertible N plus one uh, 
matrix, uh, complex matrix of size n plus one. So this automorphism is the well-known PGL n plus one. Now, in general, um, if you look, in, in general, the, the automorphism group always has a structure of a Lie group, and we can take the connected we can take the connected component of the identity, and this is a complex algebraic group. So let me just write this exact sequence just to, to, to fix um, the, uh, the concept. So uh, we have this, uh, this connected component of the identity. It's a complex algebraic group, and the, the quotient So it uh, okay. So Ethan is asking if people people that are not uh, I guess me to turn off the microphone. There may that there is some construction going going on uh, nearby. So I hope that the noise is not actually coming from uh, from from myself. Okay. So we have this uh, this exact this ex exact sequence where the the automorphism group leaves, and the so the the quotient by this uh, connected component of the identity is a countable discrete group. And in the case of K3 surfaces, the example we started with, uh, the blue part to the left is trivial. And this is because um, a K3 surface does not have a, a non-zero uh, global vector field. And so all the automorphism group is is like the pink part so it's a countable discrete group and we are going to talk more about this later so now let me consider um some examples just to illustrate this uh this different pieces of the uh, automorphism group and this is the case of, of X, when x is a smooth projective curve of genus g so in this case we have this usual trichotomy so i i um I can never resist to just uh, to just show it. And this trichotomy can be observed from many points of view in terms of curvature, uh, fundamental group, the behavior of differential forms, and also uh, in terms of the automorphism group. So let's see what happens in these three cases. So in the case when the genus is zero, so this is a P1, and we have already seen that the automorphism group of P1 is this, um, uh, linear group PGL2C, so which is uh, which is an affine variety. Now the case when of genus one, well in this case this is X is an elliptic curve, so it, it X itself is uh, it's an algebraic group, and um, and the translation will and it will act on itself by translation. So in particular, the automorph the connected component of the automorphism group contains, and it's in fact it is equal to to the curve itself. And so this is, even though these are these are both the first and the second case, we have a complex algebraic group, notice that they are very different. So the first one is an affine variety, and while the second one is a projective uh, variety. And then the, the higher genus case, uh, well, again, we don't have the, the, the um, non-trivial uh, continuous part, and we only have the discrete part, which in this case is, in fact, finite. There is even a, uh, a bound in terms of the genus for the size of this automorphism group. Okay, so now let's move to um, and let's move to another class, uh, interesting class of varieties, which, which is that of uh, smooth hypersurfaces. So I will fix D, a smooth hypersurface of degree D and dimension N, at least uh, two. And we are interested in the automorphism group. So there is this very nice theorem of uh, Matsumura and Monsky from uh, 1964 that says that except in the very special case when n equals g, so this is a surface, and the degree d is 4, so this is exactly the case of k3 surfaces in P3, so in all other cases, the automorphisms of d are those induced by linear transformations of the ambient space. So in other words, I wrote it in terms of this diagram, so I, I denote by uh, automorphism group of the pair Pn plus 1d to be the automorphisms of P1 that stabilize uh, that stabilize D. 
and so it will they will induce in particular an automorphism of d so this is this is this group homomorphism is uh, surjective so now we are left to consider precisely the case when d and n equals true and d equals four so this is exactly the case of a smooth k3 surface in p3 okay so let's look at this uh, at this case so first of all uh, the image of the restriction homomorphism so from the automorphism group of the pair to automorphism group of D is finite. On the other hand, there are many examples when the automorphism group of a K3 surface is infinite, and in fact even have uh, elements of infinite order. And so the question, maybe coming back to, to Gizatulin and Nogizo's question, is where do these automorphisms come from? So this was maybe the motivation for Gizatulin to first ask him the question, and now we have this more, more general cast question, which automorphisms of D are induced by Cremona transformations of the ambient space? Okay, so, um, so let me define, so this is a temporary definition, let me define the birational um, group of the pair, so maybe this is, I think, in the, in the, in the as Gizatulin calls it, the, um, the decomposition group of D, so this is the group of um, birational, uh, so birational self maps of P3 that uh, stabilize D. So that means that it that it induces a birational uh, self map of D. Uh, on the other hand, in the case of a smooth K3 surface, uh, any any birational self map in fact extends to an automorphism. So and so we actually have this uh, this restriction homomorphism and. So the, their question is, you know, what is the image of this uh, group homomorphism? But of course, we can we we may be also interested in understanding uh, the kernel of this uh, of this group homomorphism, or more generally, we may be interested in understanding the structure of this of this group, the subgroup of the Cremona group. Okay, so um, so now before I start. Um, approaching that question, I would like to spend some time um, describing some general results about the Cremona group. So this is a classical topic in, in algebraic geometry. So the Cremona group in dimension n is just a group of birational self-maps of Pn, so which are often called the Cremona transformations of, of Pn. So, of course, they contain, this group contains the group of automorphisms of uh, Pn, but it contains many more elements. So, let me give you an example of the simplest non-birregular um, non uh, birational self-map of uh, Pn, in fact, of P2, and this is the standard Cremona transformation. So, this, um, this is the map, the birational self-map of P2 that sends x, y, z to 1 over x, 1 over y, and 1 over z. In other words, if you multiply everything by x, y, z, you get this quadratic uh, represent, representation for this map. And so we want to, uh, so first of all, from the first description, it's easy to see that this is an involution. So it's a, it has order 2. And moreover, we see easily that it's uh, it's indeed not not an isomorphism. So it contracts the. So this is the I try to to illustrate in this picture uh, the geometry of the Cremona transformation. So it contracts the three coordinate lines to to the three coordinate opposite coordinate points, and outside the triangle. So I will call this uh, this. Uh, the union of these three lines, uh, a, a triangle. So outside this triangle, tau is just an isomorphism, and then it just contracts the lines uh, to the opposite points. Okay, so um, so this is the simplest example, but let me just say that in general, if you give me any positive degree d, I can construct a Cremona transformation that can be represented by three polyno homogeneous polynomials of this given degree d without common components. So there are um, 
Pramana transformations of arbitrary large degree. And so, however, there is this very nice classical theorem due to Nedry and Castelnovo that says that the uh, Cremona group of the plane is generated by the automorphism, the group of auto the automorphisms of uh, Pichu and this uh, single quadratic transformation tau. So with these two, with, with these generators, you can get um, all the, the arbitrarily large degree Cremona transformations. So from this very simple description, you may uh, naively believe that, you know, it's easy to understand this group, but it's, uh, it's, it's not so at all. So uh, this has been, um, this, has, this, this group has been very much investigated and only very recently we could settle some very basic fundamental questions about this group. So for instance, only uh, some 10 years ago, uh, we, Kantain uh, Lamy showed us that the, the birational, the, the Cremona group in the plane is not a simple group. So this is a basic question and, and has a very beautiful uh, answer. So their, their proof is very, very interesting. Uh, and also another, another uh, problem that only recently has been uh, completely solved is the classification of all finite subgroups of the um, of the Cremona group of the plane. So this classification started in the 19th century with, uh, with works of Bertini, but was only completed very recently uh, by Dolgachev and Skovsky. And also um, other <clears throat> aspects that have been investigated is uh, the special subgroups of the, of the Cremona group in dimension two. So many special subgroups have been constructed. So let me give you one example that is going to be interesting from our perspective, uh, which is this uh, the, the, the so-called uh, symplectic Cremona transformations of the plane. So you can see you fix this uh, mirromorphic volume form on P2. So this is the, the canonical volume form on the on a torus. Then you extend it to P2, it gets it becomes a mirromorphic volume form with poles along the triangles, the, the the three coordinate lines. And we may be interested in understanding the subgroup of the Cremona group consisting of Cremona transformations of P2 that preserve this volume form. So this is, uh, this is uh, the subgroup that we are interested in and, uh, and this, it, it was described in terms of generators by Blanc in uh, 2013. So he gave uh, the following generators for this group. So there is the, the first part, the, 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 the piece with the, with the, the under brace. So this is, this is the part of the group that preserves the torus. So we have the torus acting on, on itself uh, by translation. And then, uh, so this can be extended as a birational self map of, of P2. We also have this SL2Z that acts by monomial transformations as, uh, as I described now. And, and then, so this is the, this part was, uh, this, is, this is the part that preserves the torus and this, this part of the group is very well understood. And again, you add, in order to generate the whole group of symplectic Cremona transformations, you have to add this one more uh, Cremona transformation, which is uh, which has order five. So this is again, you you add something with order five, and then this uh, this group group becomes uh, very very rich. Okay, so let me just uh, at this point just uh, state a problem that is open, which, which is to generalize Blanc's result to higher dimensions, and in, 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 um, <clears throat> more precisely to determine the subgroup of Cremona transformations in dimension N that fix this, uh, this natural volume form. Okay, so we are, we are going to come back to this problem uh, later on. And now let me move to, uh, to the Cremona group in higher dimensions. So, uh, so I, I recall Neder Castelnovo's theorem which gives a very nice, simple description of the, uh, in terms of generators. So the Cremona group is generated by Automorphism, which are rational maps, birational maps of degree one, and tau, which is a birational map of degree two. 
And uh, the first observation already made by Ilda Hudson in 1927 is that in higher dimensions, there is no hope to have such a nice description. So the Cremona group in, in dimension at least three cannot be generated by elements of bounded degree. And, uh, and even more so, even more, um, Ivan Pans showed more recently that any set of generators for, this, uh, for the Cremona group in dimension at least three must contain uncountably many generated generators of unbounded degree. So this is very different from the, uh, the two-dimensional case. And another uh, very interesting recent result that I would like to mention is this uh, theorem by Blanc, Lamy, and Zimmerman from uh, 2019. So they also proved that, uh, that the, in, in higher dimensions, the Cremona group is not simple, but they prove in a very different way. They produce actually infinitely many, actually as many as you like, um, non-trivial homomorphisms from the by from the Cremona group in dimension n to this the, the, the cyclic group of uh, of two elements. So this is a surjective homomorphism. So in particular, the kernel will give us a normal subgroup. But notice that this is very different from the two-dimensional case. In the two-dimensional case, uh, Cantal and Lamy produce a normal subgroup. Uh, however, any quotient of the by of the Cremona group of the plane. Uh, is infinite and non-abelian. So this is very different from the higher dimensional situation. And I will not uh, say much about this result, but I, I will uh, tell you the, the, the key uh, tool used in their proof. So let me now move on to uh, birational geometry of Calabi-Yau pairs. So let me define first uh, what I mean by a Calabi-Yau pair. So this is a pair consisting of a uh, projective variety X, which we assume to have at most terminal singularity. So if you are not familiar with the notions of singularities from the minimal model program, you can think of this as smooth. So at terminal you can re re replace uh, you can replace by smooth and B is a hypersurface that is uh, anti-canonical so linearly equivalent to the minus K and we also impose restrictions on the on the singularity of the pair we ask that the pair is uh, log canonical so if you do not know what log canonical is then I will give you some examples uh, throughout the 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 talk. Okay, so um, so for instance, uh, when can take x to be pn and d a hypersurface of degree n plus one uh, after after imposing some restrictions on the singularities of this hypersurface. And now <clears throat> that we have a Calabi-Yau pair, let me just point out that if you if you think for any Calabi-Yau pair there is a unique up to scaling meromorphic volume form on X such that uh, this volume form is, is non-vanishing and it has only simple poles along D. In other words, the divisor of the, of the uh, meromorphic volume form is precisely minus D. And in general, I will denote by the, the birational group of the pair XD. So this is going to be, so this is a, it's a new definition. This is going to be the group of birational self maps of X that preserve this volume form. So this is the, the, the notation that we are going to use um, from now on. And the general problem that we, we, we have been addressing is uh, given a calabi out pair, can you to determine or at least to describe this uh, the birational group of the pair? So, for instance, this is the case in the generalization of Blanc's uh, theorem. Uh, when you look at the, um, the the canonical form on the torus and extend it to Pn, you see that it gets poles exactly along the the 
the hyperplane, the coordinate hyperplane. So the D in this case is the union of or the sum of the n plus one coordinate hyperplanes. And this is a simple normal cross in the visor. And in particular, it has uh, the pair will have log canonical singularity. So this is, uh, this is one example. The other example is precisely the example that we have been looking at since the beginning. Uh, which is uh, the birational group of uh, P3 together with a smooth quartic K3 surface on it. So let me remind you that in the beginning, in, earlier in the talk, I defined this birational group, this group of a uh, birational, this, this subgroup of the Cremona group as being the group of birational self maps of P3 that, uh, that stabilize D, that sends D to D. But it turns out that in this case, this is this is this condition of uh, stabilizing D is equivalent to saying that the that it preserves the volume form associated to D. So this is not true always, but it is true in this case. And it, this is a special case of this more general remark that if the pair X comma D has canonical singularity, so this is even milder than a log canonical. Then the group of uh, then the the condition that the the Cremona transformation um, preserves the volume form is equivalent to saying that uh, it stabilizes D. And then we can look at the restriction homomorphism from uh, the the birational group of the pair to the birational group of the um, of the hypersurface. Uh, of the, the quartic surface D. Now, this D now I'm, I'm allowing to have singularities and we are going to look at uh, such a singular case uh, soon. So in general, uh, if you have a singular quartic, then you can have birational maps that do not extend, uh, do not extend as an automorphism. So here we have to just keep the, the group of birational self maps of the quartic uh, hypersurface, the, the quartic surface. And this is just an example to illustrate that in order to have this, this geometric interpretation, canonicity is necessary. So for instance, I remind you the, the case of the standard quadratic transformation. So this is, a, this is an example of a, um, um, a special, uh, uh, this is a, a, a Cremona transformation that preserves the volume form associated to the three lines. So this is the standard um, volume form in the torus. Uh, but you notice that it does not send, uh, does not send D uh, birationally to D. In this case, the components are contracted to points. Okay, so uh, now let's go back to our problem and let me state our, our first result. So our first result says that if you want to have an interesting birational group, you have to choose your 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 hypersurface D in in a special way. So, let me state it uh, in its more general form. So, if you have a a, um, a pair that is terminal, I will not define what I mean by a terminal pair here. I will just give an example of um, of, of a terminal pair, such that the uh, the X has Picard number one, so the Picard group is generated by, say, a ample divisor H. And the Picard group of, we also assume that the Picard group of the hypersurface is, uh, is obtained by restricting this hyperplane section, or sorry, this, uh, this uh, ample generator. So if you have if you are in this situation, then the birational group of the pair coincides with the automorphism group of the pair. So for hypersurfaces, let me just uh, state the same result for hypersurface. So if I, if I start with a very general hypersurface of PN, and the uh, very general here, we will assure that it is, uh, say, smooth, and will satisfy the Lefschetz uh, type property that uh, is part of our hypothesis in theorem A. So if you take a very general hypersurface of degree N plus one, then the birational group of the pair uh, it's just its automorphism group. So if you want to, for instance, construct new interesting subgroups of the Cremona group, then we have to start with a special hypersurface. 
And so now it comes our theorem B, which is, okay, let's then look at a very uh, concrete case. Uh, when we, let's start with the hypersurface, aquatic hypersurface in P3. And let's assume that it's a general among those that contain uh, one singular point. So if you take a general quartic with one singular point, then we can compute the birational group of this pair. And this is just a semi-direct product of a group G, which I will describe, and the cyclic group with two elements. And let me just say what this group G is. This group G is what we call a form of GM, the multiplicative group over the field of uh, fractions in two variables. So what do I mean by that? I mean that G and that this G is um, is an algebraic group defined over CXY, uh, which is not isomorphic to GM over this uh, over this field. But if you make a finite base change, then it becomes isomorphic to GM. So this is the notion of a form of uh, form of GM. So let me try to make this, uh, so let, I will try to explain the, the content and the proof of uh, this theorem. Uh, but let me just start by making it a little bit more concrete by fixing the generic equation of a quartic hypersurface with one singular point. So I'm assuming that the, the point is the point with coordinates one, zero, zero, zero. And so locally, at the at the singularity, the the surface looks like uh, the vertex of a quadratic cone that I draw here in green, and this quadratic cone is exactly the cone defined by the polynomial a two in green that appears in the uh, in the equation of d, and this is the what we call the tangent cone um, of the quartic of the surface of the k three surface at the, of the surface at the point p. And if you are more interested in, um, if you are more interested in uh, in explicit birational geometry, I can actually write down all the elements in this group, in the group G. So this is uh, the, the generic. Uh, this is how a general element of G looks like. So A, B, C are the polynomials that appear in the equation of the of the quartic, and G and F are hom any homogeneous polynomials that uh, whose with degree satisfying this condition. Okay, so this is, um, so now I would like to, to explain, so in fact, first I want to explain the result and then uh, start by describing how we, we prove it. So let we, we fix this, let's look at the geometry first. So let's fix this uh, generic, this general quartic hypersurface with one singular point with this equation and let's blow up the point p so if we blow up the point p so the diagram to the left is illustrating what happens with uh, with p3 so i will call x the blow up of p3 at the point and it uh, it resolves so this the blow up resolves the, the indeterminacy of the projection from the point and so we see that x acquires a structure of a P1 bundle over P2. So each one of these P1s is representing a, um, a line through, through P in P3. So if we blow up the point, we get this structure of a P1 bundle. Now, what happens with, uh, with D? So when I blow up D, um, my surface becomes now uh, smooth. So now I have a smooth K3 surface. And it, if I restrict to D tilde this, this, this P1 bundle on X, what I get is a 2 to 1 map to P2. So this is because we, are, we were projecting from the point, uh, from the singular point, which is a double point. So we get this 2 to 1 map. And, and then it will induce an involution tau on D tilde. And so, now, in this, this is a this is a typical example of a canonical pair. So, in this case, we have already seen that the the, the birational group of um, of the pair is just the birational the group of birational transformations of P three that stabilize D. So, if we restrict, we can look at the restriction and the restriction homomorphism. In this case, the the, the group of birational self maps of 
of these is isomorphic, uh, can be seen as the group of automorphism of D tilde, and this is generated by this involution tau. So we know this because we know we understand we know completely we understand completely the geometry of the K3 surface D tilde. So in particular, we can compute its uh, its automorphism group. So now this is um, so this is a homomorphism that we, we we are going to start with, and now I will show I can show just by exhibiting an example that this homomorphism is surjective. So if I look at this very concrete Cremona transformation, I can check first that it um, that it indeed. Uh, stabilizes d so this is just have to plug in the equation of d uh this this um this coordinates in the equation this the coordinate functions in the equation of d um and then you so you see that it stabilizes d and moreover you can check that it induces the unique involution on the tilde and so this group homomorphism is um is surjective and moreover if you compute the phi square, you will see that this Cremona transformation is also an involution. And so what we get is this split exact sequence. And this is where the, uh, the semi-direct product structure comes from. So now I hope that you, we, you understood now where the, the semi-direct product structure comes. And now let me just uh, explain to you why G is a form of GM. Uh, over the field of functions of P2. So here, uh, the key point of the proof, and, and for that I will need to introduce more, um, uh, more material, but the key point of the, the proof is to show that any birational transformation of the pair P3D must preserve the star of lines through the point P. So any line through P have to be sent to a line through P. So in terms of commutative diagram, I can express it in this in the following way. So if I blow up the point, the singular point of the surface P uh, on, on, on both P3s in the target and in the domain, then it uh, then my psi is going to induce a birational self-map of X. And what, I, what it means to say that it preserves the lines, the star of lines through P, is to say that this birational map, uh, it preserves this vibration onto P2. So this is what we have to prove. And now once we prove this, then it's very easy to conclude. And let me show you how we conclude. Now G is, so now if we look, we, we are then, um, we are reinterpreted that reinterpreting this uh, this birational group of the pair as the group of birational transformations of X over P2 that stabilize the tilde. So they can either, so, and the G is exactly the part that, that fixes the tilde. So if it stabilizes the tilde, either it, it fixes it point-wise or it induces the tau, the change, the, the exchange of sheets of the double cover. And so the G, the kernel of that map, is precisely uh, consists precisely of those self maps that of X that preserve D tilde, fix D tilde pointwise, and so the D tilde can be seen as a double section. So now, if I make a base change, um, I can have. A, so now I, I will view X as a model of P1 over the function field of P2. And after making a base, base change by this uh, double section D tilde, what I get is a P1 bundle over D tilde with two disjoint sections. And I want to understand what are the automorphisms of this P1 that fix these two sections. And this is just saying what is the, the this is just GM. The automorphisms of P1 that fix two points is just the GM. So this is why G is a form of GM uh, over this function field. Okay, so uh, so I gave you sort of a sketch of the proof. Of course, 
uh, without saying anything about how we prove the key point, which is this uh, the existence of this commutative diagram. And for that, now I will introduce the main the main tool that we that we use, and this is really one of the the most powerful tools that we have. Uh, in order to study the Cremona group in higher dimensions, which is a, a factorization result for birational maps. So this is what we call the Sarkisov program. So the Sarkisov program was proved by Horty in, 2000, in, in 1995 for, uh, in, the, in dimension three. And in higher dimensions, it was, uh, was proved by Haken and McKernan uh, in 2013. So what the, the, the Sarkisov program does for us is it provides a way of factorizing birational maps of, of say, Pn. It's, it's more general, but here we want to apply it to Pn. So this is, uh, this is not a strong factorization theory in the sense that uh, we cannot factorize a birational map of Pn in terms of simple elementary birational self-maps of Pn. We have to allow for uh, other domains and co-domains. So let me just say what this, uh, what the ma maps and the and the varieties are. So the um, the psi i are what we call ele elementary links. So they are very. These are very simple birational transformations. But we have to allow other rational surfaces, and these are going to be what we call Mori fiber spaces. So the Mori fiber spaces are. In this, in, the, in this particular case that we want to factorize maps of Pn, these are precisely the possible outcomes of the minimal model program when we start with a rational variety. So these are the, the, the more fiber spaces. More, more precisely, they are defined as follows. They are, they are vibrations. Uh, such that X has terminal singularity. So these are the singularities that we have to allow usually in the minimum model program. The relative Picard number is, is one and the anti-canonical class of X is uh, relatively ample. So for instance, one uh, easy case is when I have a funnel variety with Picard number one, terminal singularities, and I just take the map to to a point. So actually in this diagram of the Sarkisov program, I should not have really varieties, but rather uh, vibration. So in the case of PN, this is just a vibration to a point, but in, in, the, in, the, other, in the other Mori fiber spaces may have maybe non-trivial vibration. So these are, so these are the, the Mori fiber spaces that appear uh, in, in this factorization. And now let me explain to you what are the elementary links. Um, so I will explain to you the elementary links first in the surface case. So what happens in the surface case? What are the Mori fiber spaces in the surface case? In the surface case, they are very simple. They are just, um, so these are the, sorry, the rational Mori fiber spaces are just the P2 uh, mapping to a point. And uh, the here's a group surfaces Fm with the structure morphism, the structure vibration to P1. And here uh, we call the, I remind you that F, F0 is just P1 cross P1 and F1 is just the blow up of P2 at a point. So these are the Mori fiber spaces. And let me tell you what are the elementary links in, in this, uh, in the two dimensional case. So there are uh, four elementary links. So the first one is you start with P2 mapping to a point and then you blow up a point P. A point P. And so this becomes a, a, a Heserbrook su surface F1 and it comes with a morphism to a, a P1 bundle structure to P1. So this is the type one. Now the type two can be described as follows. I start with a Heserbrook surface mapping to P1. Then on the FM, I blow up one point and then contract the strict transform of the fiber through this point. So this process will lead me to F plus, uh, FM plus or minus one. So the plus or minus will depend whether the point that you chose to blow up lies or not in the negative section. And so this is what we call a link of type two. A link of type three 
is just the inverse of a link of type 1. So we had a P1 bundle structure on F1. We contract the negative curve, the minus 1 curve, and then we get to P2 mapping to a point. And the fourth type is, uh, is the, the case when you start with F0, which is P1 cross P1. So in this case, P1 cross P1 um, has two P1 bundle structures, and the link of type 4 consists of just uh, changing the, the, the vibration structure that you want to consider, or in other words, the, the involution where you exchange the factors of P1. So these are the elementary links in, in the surface case, and in, the, in, in higher dimensions, the links Again, there are four types of links, and they're, they look more or less the same, with the only difference that in higher dimensions we have more maps in the context of the Mori, uh, of the, the minimal model program. So we have flips, flops that appear in the picture. So let me tell you just the generalization of the type one. Um, to higher dimension. So I recall you that the type one was the case where you blow up a point and it is convenient in this case uh, to also have a map from P1 to, to the point. So this was the link of type one in the surface case. In higher dimensions, it looks very similar. So F is not necessarily a blow up. So we start with our Mori fiber space X mapping to S. Um, this, uh, this F is could be a blow up but it, it could be something more general that we call it a divisorial contraction. So a divisorial contraction, it's, you can think, if you, if you haven't met uh, these objects before, you can think of this as a blow up. Just know that it is, it, it, it is more general than a blow up. It, is, um, it has relative Picard number one and contracts a divisor to something of higher co-dimension. So this is a, a, a divisorial contraction. But then, after you do this divisorial contraction, these, the, the, the resulting variety Z may not admit itself a, um, a structure, a vibration, a, a, a structure of a Mori fiber space. You may have to perform some flips, flops, and anti-flips. So this is what phi stands for. It's a composition of flips, flops, and and anti-flips, and then after finitely many of such, uh, such, such operations, it then acquires a structure of a more fiber space. So this would be the type one in higher dimensions. And similarly, we can define uh, the other three types of link. Okay, so now let me uh, introduce a little bit more of um, um, some some more concepts. So this is the category actually that we are going to be working on. So this, let me just go back and just observe that, sorry, that this the Sarkisov program that I just described uh, applies to birational self maps of PN. So it has nothing to do with a, um, a, a bean volume preserving uh, in the context that preserving a, a meromorphic volume form. So for that, we will have to have uh, another version of this, this theorem. So let me introduce the category that we are going to be working on. So uh, again, let me just re recall the definition of a Calabial pair. So we have a pair consistence of a, a terminal projective variety, a anti-canonical hypersurface, and then we impose this condition on the, singular, on the singularities of the pair. It's at worst uh, log canonical. And now I will define the maps in this category. So if you start with two Calabial pairs, then a birational map between the, the ambient varieties X and Y uh, will induce a, a, a map between the space of meromorphic volume forms. And we say that the birational map F is volume preserving if it takes the volume the volume form associated to, to dx to the volume form associated to uh, dy. So this is the, 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 the notion of volume preserving. Uh, so this is a, so this is this is a um, so this is a reasonable definition, but actually for us to work with it, we have um, Another maybe more technical, but also more, more, more useful definition. So this is a valuative interpretation of the, of the volume preserving condition, which says the following. So if I, ha I have this birational map 
between X and Y. And let's take a resolution, uh, a common uh, log resolution for the pairs X, X dx and Y di. So if I take this resolution Y, then I can uh, define the discrepancy of, of any divisor on, on Y. So, and the volume preserving property can be expressed in terms of, uh, of um, valuations or, or um, as follows. So for every except, so for every uh, effective divisor on Y, we can compute the discrepancy of the of the log pair uh, kx plus dx and ky plus dy, and this discrepancy must uh, must coincide. So if you don't know what this is, you can just ignore this uh, valuative interpretation. But for those who know what this is, this is actually what we actually work, use when we uh, when we work with volume preserving maps. Um, and so now that I we have the this 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 um, Calabiao pair category. I can state a, a theorem, a, a volume preserving version of the Sarkisov program. So this was proved by Corti and Calogiros in 2016. They show that uh, any volume preserving birational map between a Mori fiber Calabiao pair. So this is a Mori fiber space together with a uh, with a divisor making XD Calabiao, is a composition of volume-preserving Sarkisov links. So I have this, uh, this diagram to illustrate. So this means that I have a Sarkisov program as usual, but I can plug in divisors DIs on each step of the factorization in such a way that the, the elementary links are volume-preserving. And so this is actually a very strong condition to be volume preserving is a very strong condition and not and and it and it's very and not every elementary link will actually be volume preserving actually very few elementary links uh, will be uh, volume preserving and so now let me just um just say very briefly how we apply this volume preserving Sarkisov program in our context. So again, we start with a quartic hypersurface with one singular point P. Uh, then we want to show that the birational group of the pair is this semi-direct product. So what? So how do we go on to prove this theorem? So we consider we have to start. We start with a birational. Uh, we we start with a vo volume preserving birational self map of. P3, D, and we know that it can be factorized as a composition of elementary link, uh, volume preserving elementary links of um, Mori fibered Calabiao pairs. And now what we do is to analyze very carefully what links are possible. So for instance, because we start with P3, the first step in the first link must be to have a divisorial contraction. And then actually we show that the only way that we have a volume preserving divisorial, uh, divisorial contraction in such a way that we can produce a, a step in the, in the Sarkisov program is that if we blow up the singular point. So this is so we, the Sarkisov program, the Sarkisov factorization must start with the blow up of the point P. And then we go on, okay, so now we have this X uh, D tilde mapping to P2. So what is the possible, what are the possible uh, next links of the factorization? And then we go on to analyze using the geometry of D tilde. So this D tilde is a K3 surface that we understand completely. And, and then by analyzing the, the geometry, how uh, a birational map would act on this, on this, uh, K3 surface, and um, and the, from the description of the Sarkisov, the possible Sarkisov links, we conclude that they must be all elementary transformations, like the uh, like the one I explained for surfaces. When you you blow up a curve, you contract the strict transform of the of the vertical surface through this curve, and so this is a series of elementary transformations that of type two that preserve the vibration to P2. And in the end, again, we show that in the end, we must end with uh, exactly the blow up of X 
um, at the point P. And so now we blow down and this gives a, so the factorization, this, the Sarkeesian factorization of uh, our volume preserving map must have this form. And if you look careful, this part in the middle was exactly the key, uh, the key point that I had when I sketched the, the proof earlier on the talk. So we get exactly the, the, the diagram that we needed in order to, to understand the kernel of the restriction homomorphism. Okay, so with this, I, I end uh, the, the sketch of the proof and I also end my talk. So I thank you very much for your attention. So um, thank you, Carolina, for the for the beautiful talk. Um, questions, Carolina. So, do you have? Uh, uh, examples or where you get uh, where you still succeed in describing the group when the d is a special quartic yes well not almost I, I should say thank you for the question because this is something that we that we've been working on and actually that has taken much more work than what i presented which is the case of an a2 singularity so we started with a quartic with an a2 singularity and and then again so far we were able to classify all the mori fibered um calabial pairs that can appear in that decomposition and it turns out that there are many more than in the case of a1 singularity so there are uh, there are even a few infinite families that can that can appear and so it it uh, so th that part we have con we have uh, we have concluded we have computed all the, classified all the possible uh, intermediate steps in the Sarkeesian factorization. And now because of this uh, more complicated situation, we have not yet uh, concluded that we still have, uh, we believe that we might still have uh, the, that the, the lines through the point P are preserved. And so we would have a description exactly like in the, in the A1 case, even though the, in a sense, the birational geometry of the pair is much more complicated. So what I want to say is that the birational geometry of the pairs is not only that birational group, but it's it's much more. So for instance, which it is a classification of all um, all the the possible um, the possible equivalent birationally equivalent uh, mori fiber calabial pairs. Okay, and, and another question, do you have any, because you, you start motivating the discussion with this uh, question open and the question by Ogizu, do you have any new insight on that? Uh, and, and I was curious, do we know if uh, it's already the group that can be, the subgroup that can be represented by global birational maps can, uh, is of uh, infinite index or infinite index? So, okay, maybe I will just first address George's question, then I think there was something in the, um, in the chat. So, um, let me tell you, so Ogizo constructed a very interesting example where the surf, the quartic surface. So Ogizo considered also some special examples, but in another direction. So I did, what I, when I said that the if the quartic is, is smooth, say smooth, and the Picard in Picard number one, then you get nothing interesting. And so we started to look at the singular case. But Ogizo considered also quartics with higher Picard rank, and so he constructed, for instance, an example of a quartic, a smooth quartic with Picard rank. Um, three, I think, where uh, the automorphism group is the free group, is the free group generated by three copies of Z2. 
And so it's a complicated group. It's a, this free group in these uh, three generators. Uh, however, every automorphism is generated, is, uh, is induced by Cremona transformation. And he also con con constructed an example, Picard rank two, where um, the group is Z, the automorphism group is Z, but no non-trivial automorphism is induced by a birational transformation. So we don't know yet. Uh, he One question that he raises, I don't think he puts it as a conjecture, but he raises the question whether every, um, every element of finite order should be, whether every element of finite order is induced by a Cremona transformation. I see. Thank you. I think there was also... Uh, yeah, Eduardo is asking uh, about the condition obtained by Ivan Pan related to the generators of the n-dimensional Cremana group when n is greater than 3. Right. So in this case, so as I said, uh, Ilda Hutton observed that any set of generators um, must contain elements of arbitrarily large degree. And what Ivan Pan showed is that, moreover, this set has to be uncountable. So this, is, set this, is, this is already in dimension three, right? This is in dimension three, right? Correct. Any any further questions for Carolina? Um, so if not, let's uh, let's thank her again for her wonderful talk, and uh, and there will be some kind of additional. Thank you.